Welcome on back everyone to Total War Warhammer 3 in part 20 of our Yuan Bo Immortal Empires campaign. In today's episode we are here with Qian Huo, the champion, to hold the line against a vanguard of Rakarth's forces that are somewhere over there across the field, trying to stop us from reaching our next campaign victory point. We're gonna go ahead and let all of our flyers get back up in the air and let's see if we can't handle the Druki. Uh, so what I've got for my formation is all of our normal infantry hiding in the woods with the two astromancers and our J or two jet lions rather as our kind of anchors to let the crossbows fire in on. Since we have more range than the enemy, I want them up front. But I also don't want them to kind of spot our archers until it is far too late. So we're gonna send the uh, two jet lions and our astromancers forward to blast the enemy with spells and just be quite annoying. Let's get to it. We'll grab the Air Force team and kind of send them up to do some scouting. Like Reaper bolt throwers Today, don't actually have the best in terms of so fight hard. range, so, fight. so we, can, we can bully them a little bit here. here. Alright, so let's split the two teams up. Because the Blood Rack Medusa is going to be very dangerous if she manages to land any hits. I hear the heavens! Astromancers all forward. We do want the lion up front because it actually has the most armor. Keep moving to the side. Looks like they have one of their units of Reaper Bolt Throwers completely exposed here. We can keep the units moving up as one. Lion, get on in there. As soon as we locate the crossbows, we can have them get plastered by good old Moonbird's special ability. Go ahead and scare this group. It doesn't actually slow them like I initially thought it did. Pretty good hit there. Let's go ahead and land and make sure we deal with the Reaper Bolt Throwers as quickly as we can. As quickly as we can. So moving in for the enemy now, we've got Different cavalry squads. Let's make sure Jet Lion and Crossbows can deal with him. They're basically just trying to use the Saber Tusks as a scouting party. And we are going to have it. Over on the other side, we need to make sure our units are doing just fine. I think they're having a grand time. No more Reaper Bolt Throwers. Let's get these Crow and Lion squad up in the air. Same thing here, just go ahead and get most of the units up in the sky, that way they're not taking too much damage. We will deal with the enemy Harpies then. Alright, Saber Tusks are dueling with our jet line that I thought we had more units going to intercept. Go ahead and charge in and clobber Mayo in. Let's get Missile Mirror going on the Blood Rack Medusa on this side, and then if we can get our other jet line over using a missile mirror. You do the same on this one. Then charge in to help. We'll have the flyers getting moving. I'm going to have both of the moonbirds that we can come back over after this group. Because they're not really meant for individual combat with uh, big units like that. Our lord a little bit of help and then we'll send our infantry teams forward. So jade warriors march up. Spearmen take the sides. Start raining down. Definitely need Curse of the Midnight Wind. And you need to run from the Carnosaur. Crossbow teams need to stop moving and have them all fire on the Carnosaur at the same time. Now we're getting blasted to bits by these Blood Rag Medusa, so let's have you lot work together on them. Do a lightning strike here. We'll be having the lion pull away. Rose get on out of combat with what you're fighting, that we can kind of get another another crash landing. We'll scare off whoever is low on leadership already. We get another another missile mirror on this blood rack Medusa as we chase off the Carnosaur. Crossbows, let's have you guys now switch over to firing on Danoff. Try to lock him in place. have the jet lion intercept here and then we'll go for our astromancers are having a bad time 
drop down some lightning here for you, and then we'll kind of just go for oh, the same here. These moonbirds up in the air, and this is one of our Roman squads. Ooh, that lightning was way more damage on our squad than anyone else. Should just be able to clobber that group there. Have the lions land once more. We'll have to have the lions come up over the top and go after some of these individual uh, heroes that are still left. Our Astromancer is running for the hills, but I think the three of these can handle Blood Rack Medusa, no problem. Uh, we got one of the Blood Racks come on back. Let's see if we can't Missile Mirror that poor fool out of existence. Pros get back in on the Dark Shards. Not sure why they decided to quit. Moon Birds get back up in the air. We'll go for another Curse of the Midnight Wind to drop armor in a melee attack here. Everyone up front. And then we'll just go for more lightning on these bleak swords. Crossbows did get caught. I'll start firing. You flee on away there, Construct. Bleak Swords, let's get up in the way from them, and we'll have the Moonbirds actually utilize their skills here. Should just be one lion using its roar, since we don't have multiple that on cooldown, and there's the win. Pretty scary fight as all against the Dark Elves are, but we come out on top. Pull you away from there just so we don't die to friendly fire. And with that, we'll run down the remaining Dark Elves. All right, we are granted a Eric victory by the gods, where we, I mean, we lost a, quite a bit of health on our single entities and a single unit of crows because we hit them with our own lightning. Uh, but besides that, that's not too bad at all. We'll take the Scarecrow bow, scare crow banner on our Onyx Crowman here. And then we'll just, I guess, ask, we have to ask the Empress for more crow demons. Uh, we'll take the pardon of those captives because the replenishment is really not all that much. Spread word. Glory glisses from your brow. All right, Knights of the Trident would like a war declaration on Pestilence for 2600. Which I'm guessing Pestilence is mostly down here in the south. That I can do. We're going to be at war with them anyway by claiming the Colchin Plains. Dare talk. Your execution. We don't need to execute someone who's friendly with us. Not aggression packed for a little bit of gold. I'll take it. Well, they do have an army. Or maybe this is just confusion on the map there. All right, well, Uriel was slain in battle, as was foretold. Got an aged sage, a scarecrow better. And then a little bit of an upgrade on the mounts for that squad. Maligor has been discovered ambushing, and then Talzin is starting up their construction. Jing has grown himself two more arms to become a Grievous. Dragon -blooded and I think what we're going to do is just send Yuan Bo on his way. Turning around and drop kicking uh, the Awakening is likely a good idea. You also pop on out and grab this fell cargo. While we're here. Let's swing on out. Got Mochi uh, for your attacking my ammo crate next to me. Hang on now. That metallic sound will be incredibly noisy if we're not careful. Okay, so what is defending the Awakening here? Really not all that much. And Barnacle Beard has all of the mortars, but that we can just avoid and send uh, Big Dragon Bow in. So yeah, let's cut the head off this undead snake. And then we'll move in from there. Your victory, it says. I think not. We could sit up in an ambush for a turn and try to bring in all of the other armies from around here, but I think then we would get... We would take attrition, and then we are suffering a pretty good chance of getting wiped out ourselves. They do have, looks like, two calls in of Sarkosan Grape Shot, so any of our lads that are low armored are going to suffer a bit. Otherwise, it'll do next to nothing, which is good to see. Even these mortars don't have a lot of armor piercing, so a lot of our Jade Warriors will make it to the wall if we want. I just think we should keep them back. 
until it's time. We could just auto-resolve it, but then we're in a bad shape if, in case these other armies around here are actually kind of scary, so let's take it to them. Alright. Now to assault the undead docks that look to have uh, dried up a little bit over here. I will start deployment, and let's see. This is likely the best way to assault the fortress here. There's lots of side routes that could go up on this side. On Over here, they are all kind of forced into one, one blobby area. They can't hide underneath the bridges and such, which will be a little bit obnoxious. Now, you know what? We should attack from this side, because the first key building is here. We likely won't even make it in that far, but before they disintegrate away to nothing. You want bow? We'll start you up in the forest. You should be avoiding a few of these shots. 500 missile damage is uh, pretty nasty. You'll be able to hang him back until it's time to fly up and over the walls. We got our Moonbird back here. It's really going to determine if we can stay far enough back where we're not getting shot at by those artillery pieces. So I think we need to come in from over here. I don't know if we can deploy far enough back. Definitely can't hide in the woods. If we can reach the walls from here, they can definitely reach us with artillery. Perhaps we go for a different kind of attack strategy here. Let's go crossbows. I'm going to put two teams of the normal crossbows in front. I'm going to spread the lads out a little bit. Last two crossbows that are undeployed. But still in kind of a square formation because we are going to have to squeeze through some of these gaps. I do want a pretty nice concentration of fire all in one area. So there's our crossbow teams, with single entities in a squad, with our drum, Evan, Zhu, and then Papa Bo. Normal front line in guard mode, crossbows in guard mode, and then our flyers. Roman over here, and I'll have the, ooh, the Longma up in front of them because they actually have quite a bit more armor and resistances, so our crows shouldn't take too much damage at all. And then we'll have you kind of leading them from the center. You on bow over here. It's going to make them deploy really strangely as well. Let's grab now our front line. We'll have one of the Jade Warriors up front just in case they are able to actually hit them. Prefer it not be our archers to start. The warriors out of the side, and then behind them will be our halberdiers. Alright, drum, which we're going to try to remember to utilize as a uh, extra armor right off the bat. Evan will also be in the front lines here. Make sure everyone's deployed. We have not with our jet lion and celestial lion. That fixed up. And let the fall of the Pirate King begin. Now we're going to stay here. They are quite spread out, so I think we're going to have part of our cavalry squad go after this gun mob. You do the same, and I'm just going to send the crows over after the deck droppers. Yuan Bo, let's start moving in. Three seconds before you are a dragon. Go ahead and activate the Staff of Wujing, and then go dragon form. We'll have to move through a little bit of the tower nonsense here, but I think we can make it. Time for certainty is gone. Now we're just gonna head back to the back line there and deal with his mortars. Deck droppers are trying to fly straight over the uh, back line, which is a bold strategy. We're just going to ignore them then and go after... Or so they thought. Sorcerer. Sorcerer, you move in as well. Let's go for good old Uranus Thunderbolt. On these gun mob, and you move in as well just to kind of rip them to shreds. Fireball on these big ogres. Beautiful. Get you back up in the air, scare off everything here, try to move through. Use that charge bonus to get through a little bit faster. 
Deck droppers are getting ripped. And then we'll have you lot come in after the next group of gun mob. And cannons are quite dangerous, so we want to deal with them quickly. Roman, go after these mortars here. You go after the next group of deck droppers. Miss the, miss the attack order just barely. You on bow, drop in here and go after James. James is getting up after our Astromancer, which we don't want to see. Weaken them a bit. Let's go more armor, and then we'll start moving the actual ore in. Have them walk, though. That way they get in a little bit slower. Don't melee them, but let's go over the top here, and then we'll drop off the activated ability. Yoink. And then a little bit of chain lightning. Okay, shotguns. Land in there and deal with them pretty quickly. Saw that spray. That was horrifying. You come over here after these carronades. We've got too many units in the same spot, so let's split them up a bit. And then the flying lion can come over here after these gun mob. Chain lightning on. I honestly think you just kind of dance it through this side over here. You on bow, let's get after James as he runs for his life. The executioner's blade goes down, let's get after him. Roman, you deal with these carronades. Where are the crows at? They have now taken to the skies once more, so let's get them over the skies here after this group of mortar team. Getting shot at a little bit here. Go ahead and land and do as much damage as possible. Long but descend from the skies. What are you really going to do against the Cathayan Air Force? Let's go another fireball at James, and then we'll charge in with Executioner's Blade, finish him off. We can do another chain lightning here as these poor sirens come across the field. Try to maul this uh, arrow tower that's in our way. You guys have nothing to do, so let's go ahead and move after this gun mob with bombs. Love our lion, give the good old roar. Scare these fools off. That looks like James being sent back to the spirit realm with haste. He's lucky. Oh, backhand from Big Papa Bo is uh, not good for anyone. Let's see if they choose to stay and fight. If they do, we'll just drop a meteor on their head. You go ahead and get up in the sky there, my friend. You're now fighting a couple things you really don't want to. That's not great. Let's go for Chain Lightning to get him free. A few handguns left. Let's deal with them before they get too much damage on us. I don't see any other real range units left, though, which is great. We'll kind of move in and crash into these rotting Prometheans. We need to get our Astromancer out of there. It will be possible, though. Can you drop your, uh, your spell there, my friend? You want Bo's bodying this squad? Let's drop the Executioner's Blade on Tim Love. And I think... There's no real gates we can get through here. Let's get the main body force and send them in. Fire! I love that the Grace of Kwai Yen can actually fire up and over the walls. It is hilarious. You come on over here as well, we'll go ahead and switch it over to the reload skill. No, don't land, that would be a bad idea. But you can drop off this lovely moon fire. Moon fire and chain lightning sounds great. You on bow, go ahead and land in these hulks. Roman should rip right through this squad, although we've got everything trying to stop our our longbow from getting back up in the air. Dragon, you go ahead and crash in here. Let's go for. We really need a couple of these lads that are losing their fights to get up in the air. Stone and steel. Gotta go maul a tower real quick. Change tact. Certainly. There is a way. You two there, go ahead and get after Story. that tower. Send the lion forward to go after Tim. 
too many of the long have taken too much damage. Let's get them on their way. Increase the Jade Dragons. Power 20 fold. Do we have anything still fighting in here like they shouldn't be? Go ahead and fly on away so we don't get hit by a meteorite. They're sending the sirens up to the walls to try to stop us, but they're just getting eviscerated. Stone and steel. I'm thinking the mass route is afoot. And we managed to claim the awakening just with our air force. Beautiful. And a resoundingly decisive victory. I know James got punted into the sea. We'll take all of his gold. Sack that for another thousand, but I think we're just gonna occupy it as is. It was already fairly high tier, and we've got a lot of gold sitting here. Wu Zhu Chen is now on a Wu Jing War Compass. We have now a bound spell of, I believe, lightning and meteorite. Which is great, but I think we'll keep him on his uh his moonbird. On Bo the Pirate Hunter, so while we're at sea, we will have more leadership and more melee attack. Which is great. And now we've unlocked the Green Guardian. Centuries of silent sentry duty at the edge of the Warpstone Desert, broken by a stunning display of choreographed violence. Oh, we'll stand a little chance against the enchanted behemoth towering above them. Indeed. Go on, though, we can go for the first point into Mentor, so we can pass a little bit of his skills amongst the, uh, the younglings. And then let's come on in, and I think we want... Keep going down his Judge, Jury, Executioner skill tree, so let's go for more hit points. The dragon siblings Buster all have a ton of health, so increasing it is always great. And here for Kevin. Let's go for Woundmaker, make sure he is a mean gate master. The celestial commands. Zhu Chen actually did miscast once or twice there, but let's go ahead and grab a Comet of Cassandora, and then from there we can grab our arcane conduit. Yuan Mao. We are going to continue to move down your blue lines. We've got Irrepressible now for more replenishment rate for himself, more experience gain for himself, and then a little bit less wound recovery time, which is good in case we lose him. Which I don't plan to. As for the compass, I don't see us changing the direction anytime soon. Sell value of cargo is great, but we're making so much gold in the background just from our extra income that I am going to choose to stay where we're at. Extra winds of magic, extra control, Celestial Lake is the one for me. Got no more stone and steel tokens to use, though. Oh, the Awakening went down to tier 2, did it? it Might have been a good idea for us to sack it, then, since we lost almost all of that, uh, juicy progress here on this this poor settlement. Dragon -blooded sugar gun. Give yeah, Yufu a few extra troopers. Let's go for peasant archers here from the island. And then... What would help out against the hordes of... Unsightly... Lizardmen. Probably crane guns. To snipe out the important units like their spellcasters and uh, giant lizards. And then some long spears just because of how cheap they are. They've got 40 armor. That is the most impressive cloak that you've ever seen. You can also give her the Green Guardian if we so choose. We don't have quite have the long beards ready for Krauss of Karak, so we just want to keep building up our allegiance points with a few of these here. And Reichland is still not very elite. And our outposts with these last three are probably not built yet, so we'll just continue to build that up. Excellent. So Yuan Mao is now holding the Li Temple. I think we've got everything claimed here in this province except for Shi Wu. Which is going to be a little bit better defended. So we'll likely want to bring Yuan Ye with, her, with him to deal with that one on a quick auto resolve. So we're not fighting another generic garrison army. Okay, so we'll take you out of the Lee Temple, go into Encamp Stance, and let's get moving. We'll stay in friendly territory for the single turn, and that way we are... ...getting the most replenishment there. Either way, it's not great. How many turns? Four? 
I guess it's not that bad. Now zooming around to what needs to be upgraded. Jade Wind Mountain has the resource building. Let's come into our province tab here, make it a little bit easier on us. Isle of the Crimson Skull has the military buildings. Celestial Beacon for our first Terracotta Sentinels, absolutely. Temple of Yang, and then over here we can probably go for an additional... Oh, we can't, we're completely in uh, balance. We'll go for walls then. Since the High Sentinel is on the sea coast here. Alright, with 13,000 gold left. What to do? Magistrate reporting. Got Hexawaddle now trending towards the extremely positive in control. Make more money here at Skeggy. More money at Shilong. Increase the defenses there at the Maw Gate, which would be probably pretty useful. Just make sure that there's no green skins coming through. Could you pop out and just do some scouting there? There's no way there's no armies left over. Really? Hunting for reagents. So they have left the Vale of Titans. They might be moving here towards Shenyang. Lord reporting. So let's make sure you have a few more troopers as well. So let's go one more crossbow, two onyx crowmen to make sure we control the skies. And can kind of descend on any and artillery pieces nice and easily. Stay in the crossroads here so we can move back into Qing's army. And we should also give him a little bit better walls, I think. Can't be attacked from the south as easily now, especially since we've made peace with uh, the Blue Roses. It's bizarre. Ugath is still down here in the south, but hopefully Imric should be able to wipe him out pretty quickly. We are speeding along towards campaign victory here. Which for us, campaign victory it looks like. Constructing all of the Astromantic Relays and then defending the Wujing Compass from the final incursion. At that point, I will call this campaign uh, successful, and then we will pivot on to our next one, which is going to be the Krotgar with the Lost Calm Jurassic mod, which is a pretty insanely great, very well made Iron dinosaur mod there. Dragon. So, Iron Dragon, let's go ahead and combine up your more weakened Show warriors me. and then go for. The uh, Green Guardian. Duty. Good old Warp Stone. And I'm thinking there is another large force down here in the south that Grimgor is likely to take over, but we need to move with Zhao Ming to stamp out their uh, strongest military zones, which should be actually Karak Frag. Looks like a tier 5 to me. The Celestial Onward to violence. Yeah, we'll just move into their territory here. Shady Neck Snapper. Good time. We're actually replenishing more in enemy territory, but it'll still take eight turns. The Wolfstone Desert. Feng Liang, you need to start moving a little bit south. Allocate shifts as you take, you get almost no replenishment here. Fate reveals a path. That way we kind of know what's going on down here. We'll give Serve you... And honor your ancestors. Ooh, tough call. We've already got four archers, seven total uh, missile units. Let's go one spear, one archer. Kind of even that out a little bit. Xiao Kang, you continue to defend Hexawaddle. Chen Huo, I really need you to replenish, and Rikarth is right here. The quickest way to lose an army is a sunken ship. Yes, indeed. The quickest way to lose an army is a sinking ship. Oh, Elon's gone back to defend the Great Turtle Isle. Good for you, not for us. Our cars can actually make it back up on land, which is a little bit terrifying. Attention. Let's try to land here then at the Wellspring of Eternity like I was initially going to. That way we can do some replenishing and then grab ourselves an additional soldier before we move on. Since we did lose those crowmen. Take up positions. Jian, what are you mostly rolling with in terms of army? A pretty good spread, but it is a good idea to give our crossbows more missile strength and range. As for everyone else here, let's go Arcane Conduit, and then we'll pivot on over to start grabbing the scouting trade there. 
We definitely have lots of heroes and lords that need more uh, magical items. Put an additional point into chain lightning. Men, to your deal with groups of Druki. I will not have a day wasted. I would have, have a day wasted. Anything we can do to give us more replenishment? Yes, but it would take us out of uh, out of balance, which I don't really want. Alright. That's on the black is, is back with a whole squad of laborers. We should just claim this defeat trait real quick. Don't mind if I do. Yeah, we'll take that win. Seitang and company will annihilate them. 388 kills to our crossbow teams. Target practice. Sack the settlement again. It's ironic that Zatan the Cruel, surely one of the cruelest has ever lived, has been cruelly killed. Oh well, if you insist on living by the sword. More magical item drop chance and more range for our artillery. Ooh. Alright then. Sounds like UO needs uh needs some firing rockets. I will take first watch. I will take first watch. So that means these peasant archers are gonna get the boot. Nothing personal. Only logistics. Then we'll try to get some more artillery. We could even use good old Golden Order artillery, because I think they would also get boosted up. And they would indeed. 552 range. That is insane. Sniper rockets. Humility in all things. And then watched by the Watcher. So we're able to reveal all units in the entire map. Sure, why not? Removes stock, unspottable, and hide forest. Not great for fighting against the Dawi Zar, so we'll, we'll come back to that one. We'll just grab these Celestial Quivers instead. More ammunition and base damage. We're up to 45 damage for Jade Warrior crossbows. Our Celestial Dragon crossbows are going to be terrifying. I'm going to take a quick break, though, and then we're going to go ahead and finish this episode when I come on back. And we're back. Lady Wizard was on her lunch break, so I went and met up, and we had a little bit of a leftover fajitas, and it was fantastic. So let's get back to our uh, our battle here. General of the Celestial Host. I'm thinking General Yu. So we've got the fast hands unlocked for now. What else do you really have here? Jade Warriors, the Lions, and Crowman. General. We could switch up what we're utilizing here, but he's got Stone Gaze, which would be. Uh, the unified charge then, wouldn't it? Yes, indeed. 10% more speed, 5 more melee attack, and then 10% more physical resistance. Uh, so this will go ahead and unlock. You will turn down such Our weapon. Jade Lion will start to get the buff already. I'm going to suppress uh, coughs there, so it might sound a bit strange. Sir, That'll be why. The front. Uh, Shuo Tang. Let's go ahead and apply training, and then Will of the Dragons for that additional... Leadership. Fight and be recompensed. Fortunately, our global recruitment is a little bit uh, occupied, but as soon as we are able, we'll start grabbing in a few more of these uh, lions and even our terracotta sentinel once we are able to recruit them as well. You shall not defeat me, Nurgle. Although he's trying his best. All right, let me mute for a quick moment while we uh, move around here and stop my. Uh, off. Nah, hopefully that's the that's the worst of it over. Let's grab the lumber mill here in Jinwu. In fact, we are perfectly in harmony, so if anything, we want to wait or switch over into so our income is at 17,000. We can go ahead and drop into Yin for a moment while also increasing control. That'll help build us up towards uh, Tier 5 a little bit faster here. I almost think we need another army. They're like 2,000 income uh, piece now, which is insane. Let's go for the control increase here in Grimtop, which will also help out with uh, the replenishment rate in the area. Storm Dragon's Edict is perfect. 
for what we're doing here. I really like to move up and threaten Naval Peak, but let's stay for another turn, and that way we know exactly what's going on here. And while I had her in this crossroads, let's move her a little bit towards Ample Peak. Ai Chai has no elite building, so let's go ahead and take Jiju up. Now we can get all of the growth in that province sorted. And lastly, let's swing around to our different lords that are yet to be moved. Well, Pang, hopefully we can get a couple more elites here with you. We've got three Dragon Guard, two Jade Warriors. Let's go for one more Crowman, and then he'll have two additional slots for, I think, Fire Rain Rockets sound good. Fire Rain Rockets are perhaps the flying variant, the uh, Sky Junk. Yeah, we're still 18 on Crescent Cracks, we'll have to wait a bit there. Ready to defend. Okay, Qian is on his way back, which is perfect. Xiao Kang is sitting in Exowaddle, if I remember. It's been, it's been about an hour since I was lost on, so I'm trying to kind of remember that you pop in and out. That way you aren't bothering us with a, your notification. I'm going to keep you in Hexawaddle, but let's go ahead and advance up to the Fallen Gates. That way we can kind of keep an eye on Sildurator and Iron Spike. I don't think that the forces of Marathi are going to come after us. They've got a lot to deal with. Of Grand Keep you on your merry journey. Uh, Tian will have you try to steal some more tech from Golden Ziggurat. I desire their research. Leave Lady Musk in the wake. While you do that, let's see about any diplomacy. As we continue to grow in strength. Auckland and Harold's very help. Yes, please. So don't waste our time. Listen, if we could finally make friends with the Sisters of Twilight, everything we've been trying to do in our previous campaigns. Athel Lauren agrees to your proposal. Who are you at war with? No one right now. Surprising. I was going to happily join any war you were in the middle of. Or Grove of Woe has actually switched sides, and now he's fighting on the Empire team. For now. Which doesn't usually happen until near the end of the end times. Right before it's too late. What do you Mal I think Malika is the one that in ends up uh, chopping her head off. What? Rest in peace, Trisha. Greetings. You no doubt have a real We'll take your money there, Ungram. When Garagrum's about to come on in as well, so I think an Ungram campaign is uh not far away from us here. Harakaraziak is I don't believe this is one of the major settlements. I'll admit to not having spent much time in the dwarf holds. Herak Ungor, though, is also a minor settlement. Alright, well, what about... Irkulaz is a capital. We'll do this, then. We've got Iron Drakes, Cannons, we've got all of the, pretty much all of the good stuff, and they should upgrade pretty quickly. Just make sure nowhere else has better stuff. Raziak, I think, is also getting the things from his initial starting province. So let's go back over to... I believe it was Irkulaz here. And we'll put in the outpost right away. Franklin's got a new mission for us. So let's go ahead and accept defeating Ikiklaw. And that should just be about all for this turn. Some skill points to pass out, though. So let's go for... Scouting's not all that useful for you, is it? Let's go wound, that way we can use him as a hero nullifier if we need to. What was the world like? His flying bird should be very useful in that as well. Was there life? If only for theming reasons. Oh really? Clan Mulder? Oh no. Rattling guns ahoy. I mean, we have Sky Lanterns, which won't last very long in a fight. 184 ranged, they're 145, so we do outrange the rattling guns. As long as we are doing things correctly, we should survive here. Odd resolve things, we won't. Uh, but in the fight of Storm Vermin versus uh, Celestial Dragon Guard, that's not even not even close. We've got 43 melee attack and 53 defense, whereas the Storm Vermin are down, even if they're most elite, in the 30s, which is fairly pitiful. 
Our charge bonus and a normal well, charge bonus doesn't matter, but normal weapon strength is exactly the same, though. No. Just a little bit higher. They are rats, after all. This is going to be a nasty battle. We shall pick up in the next episode. Thank you all so much for stopping by today's Yuan Bo campaign. If you enjoyed the episode, remember to leave a like for Light God and a sub for the Sub Throne, and I'll see you all in the next one.